Blog Talk Radio. Right, all praises. All praises to the God Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We are back. Father has allowed us to come again to do his will by talking about his word from a true Israelite perspective. Not a Gentile, not a heathen, not a Christian, not a Muslim, not a Buddhist, not a white man, not a Hinduist, not a black man, an Israelite. And tonight, we need to be all excited that our redemption draws near. See, this whole concept of all their madness of religion, it boils down to the one thing that they never talk about, that none of these faux religions talk about. What is that one thing that they don't ever talk about? It's the redeeming of Israel. You know, we, you know, Isaiah, Isaiah, you know, a lot of the Old Testament talks about it for sure. Um, and they don't, they don't, they don't discuss this. They're, they're too busy talking about, um, you know, how they can find love and forgiveness, but yet they don't do anything. How they got faith, yet they don't do anything. How Allah is is great and Muhammad, and yet they don't do anything. Nobody is doing anything in these religions to warrant any type of salvation. They're just not doing anything. They speak a lot. They talk a lot, but they're not doing anything. That's why at the end, they're going to have to do something, and it's going to catch them off guard. Because in their mind, all they ever had to do was say they love Allah or or, or Sheba, or not Sheba, Sheba, or, you know, or Jesus, or, or whoever the heck they want to proclaim is their God. Whoever, whatever being that, or, or rather, whatever spirit that the Father gave, put over them to lead them astray from him. But see, this is the beautiful thing. This is the beautiful thing of the times that we're in now. Hold on a second. It's interesting to me. I'm trying to find this. Hold on one second. But it's very interesting to me how no one discusses the redemption of Israel. You know, I'm talking, I mean, the, the, the saints, sure, the prophets, sure, but the world today does not discuss this redemption piece of Israel. And it's so huge because the redeeming, the redeeming of Israel goes hand in hand with the eschatology, the eschatology of scriptures. It goes hand in hand. Like you can't have one without the other. But somehow they got us believing that that doesn't matter because of their supersessionism. They got to, you know, for a long time we weren't able to see, we weren't able to remember. Now we're coming into this age of remembrance. And in our remembrance is our redemption because for us to be redeemed, we have to remember who we are and whose we are. That's uh, Jubilees 15, 30, 28 through 32, I believe, where it discusses who he has, his people, okay? And we're going to talk about this redeeming piece because this is key. And, and, and you know, uh, you know, you got – you got various verses talking about the redemption. You know, Isaiah 43, uh, 43, uh, what is this, 1 through 7, um, the God of Israel will redeem them. You know, this this whole redeeming um, principle is really what it's all about, right? So 
one of the things that I kept questioning is, well, let me look real quick. Why does Israel have to be redeemed? We know we went off and all this, and, you know, we, we did some wicked stuff, and we did. But really, why do they have to be redeemed? Why? You know, yeah, you know, we can repent. We could have repented of the wickedness that we did. We could have repented and all would have been well. But why do we, why did Israel have to be redeemed? And in particular, at the end, for it all to make sense. Why? Well, this is the answer. This is the answer. And I'm going to read this because it's fitting, but it's the answer. It is the answer as to why, and this is Matthew 27. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm going to read, even though the whole thing, I mean, it's, it, it, you know. I mean, the, the 30 pieces of silver, you know, I mean, it's all in here. Um, you know, this is why it's so important to understand who Israel is. Um, but let's go to, let's start at... And this is, you know, this is when, um, to set the stage, this is when, this is after Christ was betrayed by Judas. Judas gave the 30 pieces of silver to, I mean, uh, they they gave Judas the 30 pieces of silver. Judas went and gave the money back or the silver, pieces of silver back to um, the Pharisee priest. The priest said, I can't, we ain't going to do this, ain't going into the, into the general fund. This is going to go into the fund for the dead. So that's kind of what the 30 piece of silver is. But now Yahawashai is brought to Pontius, Pontius Pilate, and we start at 15. Now at the feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Yahawashai, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. Okay, so the 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 priests had envied the 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 Pharisees all envied Christ, so they de, they delivered him because they were all full of envy. We'll discuss that in a, uh, later on. When he was set down on the judgment seat. His wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with this just man? For I have suffered many things this day in dream because of him. That's huge, okay? But this chief priest, but the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and ask for Barabbas and destroy Yahawashah. The governor answered and said unto them, whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Yahawashai, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the mork, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that, that he could prevail nothing but, that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and our children. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Read it. Let me say that one more time. Then answered all the Israelites, saying, His blood, Yahawashah's blood, be on us and on our children. This is why we have to to be redeemed because our forefathers did a wicked, even though it was destined and predestined to, to occur and happen, it had to be the way it was, they did a wicked thing. 
And Israel had to be redeemed from this wicked thing. Yahawashai, of course, he forgave his people. Because that's who Yahawashai is. He realized he already knew what was going to happen. He, he knew his mission. He knew what he had to do. He curved the mission to exact damage upon the spirits that were leading our people astray. So this is what the redeem, redemption, the redeeming of Israel is all about because our, the blood of Yahawashai's death was on us. It was on us. Yes, the degenerate Gentiles cut them, spit on them, mocked them, beat them. But we or our forefathers chose that fate. And in and in, inadvertently, not even inadvertently, and synonymously put us here now, here in the here and now in Canon's fire. That's why we have to be redeemed. That's why the redemption of Israel is the key to all of this. The Gentiles don't talk about redeem, redemption, redeem, repenting. They don't talk about those things because they don't want to talk about those things because to talk about those things would mean that they have to self-convince, self-reflect, and look at themselves in the mirror. They don't ever want to do that. Because a prime example is stupid DeSantis. Talking about, oh, we're going to take away this stuff. This, this, this nigger history is just crazy. We can't talk about that. We can't talk about what we did with them peoples. Those peoples, that didn't exist. We've got to take all these books out that talk about what we did. I mean, what, what happened then? I don't even believe that. They're in a state of psychosis, in a great stupor. And we see it. We see the dysfunction in their minds, in the in the mental illness that they have. It's like, I, you know, I heard, I, I saw, and I heard the other day that you know they got flesh eating drugs out here. You know, these drugs that they smoking and, and ingesting and poking themselves with, it's creating a flesh eating. It's it's eating their flesh. I mean, the days of just smoking some weed is that those. I mean, shoot, weed is like nothing. I mean, unless you get that government weed, like that government cheese. You know what I'm saying? You know it's all poison. You know, find yourself somebody growing it. You know, get some clippings, have some tea. You know, do what you need to do, but don't be out here like these foolish people taking these chemically created drugs. And I know the nation is I know the nation's not doing that. I mean it's not even it's not even a puzzle and it's not for us and we understand it. But it's just it's just interesting that we're seeing the demise of Rome and the revived Roman Empire. And Rome does not want <clears throat> excuse me, Rome does not want to discuss their demise. So they call it uh, a weather balloon. They call it, oh, it was a train accident derailment. They talk about, you know, oh, well, the earthquake, you know, climate change. You know, they, they don't want to discuss it because to discuss it again brings them into the forefront of why these things are happening. The why is always the key. The why. Nobody wants to deal with it. They don't want to deal with the whys. They only want to blame. They don't want to talk about the effect. They don't want to deal with the cause, the causality of their kingdom. This is their kingdom. And we see it not flourishing anymore. We see the fire is dimming quickly. And in this dimming of their flame, you see a spark all over the place. And this spark is Israel. We're calm. We're patient. We are tired of dealing 
with ignorant as people, willfully ignorant as people, willfully. And listen, this ain't got nothing to do with the color of your skin. This is just the mentality of people. And it's funny because you can see them a mile away. You can tell now. You can see. You can, it's interesting to me because I, I'm seeing the spirits on people as they move. I'm starting to be able to see these things on people. I'm starting to hear it in their in their tone when I'm on the phone with them. I'm starting to be able to smell them. And I'm going, hmm, I'm not going to be bothered. I'm just not going to be bothered. And it's 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 quite comical in the big scheme of things because if you're not able to repent, how then can you be forgiven? It's it's a comedy. It's as a matter of fact, it's a comedy of errors. And they're making these blunders daily, like Jojo Mago, Jojo jo, 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 jo Magoo. He just got a, for a clean, fresh bill of health. That they they use words like he's vibrant, uh, vigorous, you know. And this man can't even speak in, in our face, telling us. It's the epitome of they ain't looking to be redeemed. They don't think about those things. They, matter of fact, redeem. What do I need to be redeemed? What do they need to be redeemed from? It, this is me, me, in their mind. In their mind, they're saying, "Why do I need to be redeemed? I didn't do anything." See, and this is this is the conundrum. This is the big conundrum. This is why Christ is, Yahweh Shai is going to say, but I never knew you. I, I, it ain't got nothing about your color. I never knew you. You didn't act right. You didn't think right. You didn't do right. This is the biggest issue with Paul. As we, as we awake and start to remember who we are, this is our big issue with Paul. Paul was telling, Paul was telling people, just have faith. All you need is faith. You ain't got to do nothing. And, and he confused the matter by then saying, oh, uh, uh, faith without works is dead. So he's, he, he's confusing. And, and uh, granted, uh, I will say this, granted, we must consider the source that the, the foolish nations created or added to, ad libbed, uh, took away uh, truth so did they just beat up and bastardize Paul? Probably. Is Paul a bad guy? I, I, don't, I can't say he is. But what they're teaching, the Paulina, the Paulina, Paulina doctrine or dogma that the foolish nations have taken as their own is corrupted. It is pure corruption. Pure corruption. And we know that we have to do so. I mean, the work. Let me just let me let me look this up real quick, because this is this is uh, this is why. <laughs> like this isn't even hard anymore. Repentance. Repentance. The action of repenting. The action of repenting. I mean, the action of, so therefore you're doing something. See, we get caught up, like even this, like repent is the verb. Repenting or repentance is the noun, okay? The present participle of repent is repenting. Meaning you are, it, is, it is what you're doing. I don't ever hear uh, a Gentile or even a Christian talk about repenting. I mean, I, matter of fact, I'm reflecting right now, and I cannot reflect and or re- recollect um, any Christian person I've ever heard or talked to or listened to 
talk about repentance. That's an action because if I'm repenting, then I'm not just sitting on my ass. I'm not just waiting around for Christ. I'm actually repenting, so I'm doing something to bring Christ close to me, bring the righteousness close to me. Because if you're not repenting, what's the converse? Let's see. Some common synonyms of repentance are compunction, contrition, penitence, and remorse. While all these words mean regret for sin or wrongdoing, repentance adds the implication of a resolved change. So, again, if I'm a Christian, why, 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 and, and I'm making all this money, why, why am I trying to change? Why am I trying to change? If I'm a rich man and I'm in my church every Sunday just talking crap, but yet I'm saying, you know, I love Jesus, but I'm not talking about repenting, why why do I want to change anything? I'm good with who I am. This is the Gentile mind. The Gentile mind is not to repent. And repentance is redeeming. To repent, then redeem. Still go back to the original situation. What are these Gentiles being redeemed from? They're not. They're just not being redeemed. Uh, Antonyms, let me see. Antonyms for repentance. I didn't ask for that. Okay, here we go. Con- uh, regret, remorse, sorrow, guilt, grief. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> so remorse, sorrow, guilt, grief. Is this not what we're seeing today? This is where we are today because nobody wants to repent, or rather, the Gentiles don't want to repent. If they can't repent, then they can't be redeemed. If you do not repent, then you cannot be redeemed. It's like they go, you know, the the the, the Christians and the Gentiles will say, well, you know, ain't nobody perfect. Uh, you know, you're a sinner. Whoa, 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 like whoa, no. No, 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 no. I am a repentant sinner. Don't put me in the category of willful sinners. Don't put me in that. I'm not sitting here every day trying to premeditatively figure out how to do in someone or treat someone bad or be wrong to someone. That's what Gentiles do. That's what they do. It's like, you know, at work. You know, here 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 I am, busting my hump. Uh, you know, making this 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 company money, hand over fist, and then they want to outsource my department because they ain't making the same amount of money that they were making during COVID. How can they save money? Eh, let's just let's just cut some people, lay them off. Let's just cut them out the way. And that way we ain't got to pay them and we can keep more money. And they think that that mindset is going to protect them from grief, remorse, sorrow, and guilt. But little do they know, the time of their enjoying this life is over. Is over. The one, you know, it's funny because as we matriculate through this 
period of time to the eschatology of our end game back to the Father, to the kingdom to come, what we're doing is not what they're doing. And we are having a a a comfort come upon us just because of repenting. We do something, we repent, we try to change, we keep working at it, we keep working at it. We don't say, well, you know, I did it, I repent, I'm saved in holy favor. No, you keep, the, the action of repentance holds the demons at bay. But you won't hear that with the Gentiles because that's not what they understand. All they understand is the vice. It's like I wondered, you know, we got, you know, the, the keys to the kingdom. Everybody said, oh, well, Jesus is the key to the kingdom. Whoa, 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 whoa. Like, whoa. Is he the key or is he the king? I mean, you know the king, but just because you know the king, are you getting in? Is he going to let you in? Just because you know me, are you able to come into my house? Am I letting you in the house just because I know you? I've seen you on the street? No. So what is the keys to getting into the kingdom? I'm glad you asked. Glad you asked. These are the keys. And, and, and let me do it this way. And, 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 and when I read these keys, we have to esoterically put them in order and in place, own sanctity, because we have to look at it and ask the question, what, what, if, this, if this is the key to the kingdom to come, or if these are the keys to the kingdom to come, how come the world doesn't even understand it? That's because the world has the keys to the lake of fire. Now watch this. Here are the keys to the lake of fire. And tell me if this doesn't make sense to why this world, why the world, why the Gentile, he, the heathen Gentiles world is coming to an end. They love this stuff. They love this. This is, this is what they love. They eat it up. They can't help themselves. They glorify it. Profit, they profit in it. They eat it. They lust after it. Pride, anger, lust, envy, Greed, gluttony, and sloth. Is that not this world? Is that not what they do? They all up in their pride. Every every one of these foolish nations, every one of these European controlled nations, prideful. They all are anger. Quit the anger. I hate you. I'll kill you. Part of their whole dynamic of society. Kill, anger, hate. Lust, everything got to be about showing their boobies and their butt. Everything got to be about, you know, getting some. Everything got to be about lusting after something. Lust. Something. It could be a person. It could be a food. It could be anything. But lust is in the, I got to have it. Envy. Oh, I got to get what he got. I got to keep up with the Joneses. I got. I got to have. I got to get mine before you get yours. This not this world. Greed. And that speaks for itself. Look at this place, full of greed. Oh, we're gonna go kill people with a hundred billion dollars, but yet we ain't. We can't got no money for you. 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 You poor white folks over in Ohio that just we just poisoned you. We ain't got no money for the for the indigent and the and the downtrodden and the homeless and the poor. We ain't got no money for that. Shoot. But you know, when you say war, shoot. Me say war. Kill, kill. 
all that's in the minds of these demons, heathen, Gentiles, is red rum. This is their mind, red rum. Red rum. If you know, you know, red rum. That's it. That's what they, they can't help themselves. Six, gluttony. Uh, let's go hoard. Let, matter of fact, uh, make sure you got your, what is it, what do they call it? Um, <laughs> what do they call it? Shoot. Um, when they when they hoard, like now, the, the preppers, make sure you go get all your prep, prep, prep. That's gluttony. Why, why are you trying to hoard stuff? You ain't supposed to hoard. You ain't supposed to store up treasures for you here. The Gentiles kill me with this madness. Sloth, laziness. Oh, you niggas are lazy. I know that you got, we got you out there seven, seven bell to bell, you know, uh, uh, the, the cooking and cleaning and, and building and, and, and picking our cotton, but you niggas is lazy. Huh? Why, why am I lazy? The, the more money, the more I give you, the less you do. You think that those fools that sit in these high high corporations are working diligently? Absolutely not. They ain't doing nothing. Talk about sloth. It's from the top down. It's like, yeah, Biden. Biden tricking everybody, rolling out in a little small plane over to see his girlfriend over in Ukraine. His boyfriend, I should say, over in Ukraine. And 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 and. and he he ain't doing nothing. You think he's doing something? Oh, well, he's thinking. That, that fool ain't even thinking. That fool can't think. He can't even communicate. Sloth, laziness. But they project that onto us. And they have projected that onto us. Onto your people. My people, our people. This is this is what they say against us. Oh, those those niggas are all, hey, always angry. Oh, those niggas are always lusting. Oh, those niggas always want something. Them niggas are always greedy. Them niggas are always gluttonous, trying to keep something. Them niggas are so lazy. This is what they did to us. And for for a large part portion of us that fell into this. It fell into this. And this is the redeeming issues that we have had, where we were not able to be redeemed as we thought, how we thought, and why we thought that we should be redeemed. So, therefore, we decided to be part of the Gentiles' lust, anger, pride, Envy, greed, gluttony, and sloth. Why? Because that was what the world showed us that we could survive in. Matter of fact, that's the only way we could survive is if we tagged along with, or if we connected one of these seven things, we could maybe make some money, find some comfort, and move on. But that was then, and this is now, and this is now. And this is why they're having a hard time, a hard time, because they cannot do these. They cannot. And this is, this is an absolute. This is an absolute. They cannot. They, <laughs> they cannot overcome the vices the seven deadly sins, to find salvation in the virtue, humility, charity, chastity, gratitude, temperance, patience, and diligence. And why is that? This is, I saw this little thing. I thought this was interesting. And it says, kindness. This cures envy. Because this is, this, is this is their thing. 
Kindness cures envy by placing the desire to help others above the need to supersede them. Well, they can't do that. They, they, they ain't got time for kindness. Ain't no kindness in making money. Temperance cures gluttony by implanting the desire to be healthy, therefore making one fit to serve others. What? They ain't going to give up their money and their food and their house and their cars to give to, to serve some? Are you crazy? They, they can't do it. Charity or love is a big one. Cures greed by putting the desire to help others above, storing up treasures for oneself. Absolutely not. Not ne'er penny is going to anybody. They will try to die. They will burn their dollars up. Matter of fact, they will destroy the dollar before they give it to the poor, before they give it to us. Okay. Chastity or self-control cures lust by controlling passion and leveraging that energy for the good of others. Shoot, what, what's, what's, what's that thing called? Um, that girl who killed her boyfriend, she was on, what's it called? Follow me? No. It's, it's, uh, something that you can go online and and... And, and see uh, lasciviousness, lust, and lusting for these women, these men um, that do these uh, sexual immorality acts. Um, you can see them, and it's called something just for something. In this question, anyway, they're not going to give that up. The, the porn industry is a billion plus dollar a year, and they're not giving that up. They're not going to give up any type of money, wealth. They're not giving that up. Humility cures pride by removing one's ego and boastfulness, therefore allowing the attitude of service. They are not going to give up the pride of their flag or the pride of their people. That's all they got. If they, give, if they show humility, then that to them is defeat. This is something that this they will never, the Gentile will never do these things. They will never, 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 never be virtuous people. Diligence or zeal cures slothfulness by placing the best interests of others above the life of ease and relaxation. Again, their whole premise to be have a life of ease and relaxation. What's it what was it called during the eighteen hundreds? The the uh, when it was an age of um, where they the, the Europeans start going colonizing and they didn't want to do anything, so all they wanted to do was to uh, have a life of of ease and relaxation at the cost of all the Aboriginal or Indigenous people. They're not going to give these things up. This is they built the system is <laughs> the system is built upon. The seven deadly sins, and this is the good. This is the this is the one that this is the last one, the seventh one that they cannot do. Patience equals or patience cures wrath by taking time to understand the need and desires of others before acting or speaking. Hell to the no no no. These people are on no Matter of fact, they want it now. What was it, J.G., 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 J.G. Whitmer? I want my money, and I want it now. You think that they're going to give a uh, – listen, you know, I understand it'll be pa- I'll be patient. No, they ain't going to – no, they can't handle patience. Patience is a heavy stone amongst them. It's a burden. These vices are burdens to them. These virtues are burdens to them. Everything that they have done is a burden to them. The only thing that takes a burden away is repentance, which then allows you to be redeemed because you put yourself into an active role of change is why Israel will be redeemed. 
We had to change from the mindset of it's okay to kill Christ. Let his the audacity of our people to say, let shoot, let that nigga's blood be on us and our children. What fool? What? It, why? You could have just said anything. You could have just said yes. We want just kill him. They could have said that. No. No. They had to go all in. They had to go all in so that we can understand redemption. So when people are running around talking about, oh, I don't know what you're talking about, repentance or redeem or redeem, you can laugh at them. Yeah, okay, fine, that's good. You, you, don't, you don't need to understand. Matter of fact, stick with your vice and roll on. I'm, a, I'm fighting for these virtues because now we get to be, because we get to be redeemed, we get to have the vice, we get to have the virtues. We get to choose now. We never, ever had the option of choosing. All we had was the vice. What is the vice? In a esoteric, spiritual understanding, the vice is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The virtues is the tree of life. Hence, the keys to the kingdom is the tree of life. The keys to the lake of fire is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And we, you know, we are so far ahead of the game. Like, I mean, brothers and sisters in this, in this action, the brothers and sisters who are actually in this walk, not sitting around, you know, churchianity in is Israel, you know, aka camp life. You know, the ones that are actually showing diligence, working on patience, being humble, exercising self-control, showing love, having temperance, and being kind, man, you get comfort. You get comfort in that because we don't care about Esau, we don't care about the white man. We don't care about what they did. We want justice. And the only way we're going to gain justice is by allowing the father to do his what? Work. So this Paul scenario of, you know, you just need to have faith. You ain't, you ain't got to do nothing. Faith is all you need. See, that goes completely against even the the the, the, the actions, I guess it is, the actions of the father. The father is an active, and see, this is the, this is the key. Because the father chose not to be active for his through through and by his people for a time, the world said, "Ain't no God. You niggas is stupid. Y'all need to get over here with us if you want to make this money and find success." And because we were blind, we were like. Yes, I mean, I know this is wrong, but, I mean, I got to survive. I got to eat. Kids got to eat. I got to do this thing. Sometimes it worked out. Sometimes it didn't. But for the Gentiles, it worked out because this is their system and this was their turn. For us, sometimes it did, sometimes it didn't. And if it did, sometimes it came back later. For them, it didn't, you know, statute of limitation, baby. Statute of limitation, I don't know what you're talking about. Wasn't me. Matter of fact, it was that nigga over there. What? I've been sitting here. I'm, I'm so tired. My bones ache. I just got off the, out the field. I, I ain't do nothing. No. Nope. I just got off the, the, the plant. Nope, you did it. I just got I just got home from the war. Nope, you did it. So this, this whole concept of redeeming is something that they're missing out on. This whole concept of works is something that they're missing out on. All they can think about is forgiveness, but they're not even asking the people who they've wronged to forgive them. See, that's, that's the agony.
agonizing, ignorantly, ignorantly, agonizingly, ignorantly, uh, audacity mindset of these people. Of these people. Where they can't even fathom who they need to be, who they need to ask forgiveness from. Now, I'm not talking about when they kill one of us and then they go, oh, you know, the the family get up there and used to get up there and say, well, we forgive him. I know he'd like, we, she, he, she would want us to forgive him. Not, you know, no, we ain't talking about that. We're talking about in the bigger scheme. Hey, you know what, niggas, a couple hundred years ago, our people were out of their mind. We did some bad things. We did a lot of bad things. Uh, you know, we treated y'all wrong. We stole, we killed, we ate, we did we did everything we could do to get to where we are. And for that we're sorry. And you know what? Here's what we're gonna do. See that 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 that's that <laughs> that is too much like right. So they can't do that. Because if they do that, then that destroys their entire system. So they're not doing it. So therefore the most high says, Vengeance is mine. Don't you worry about that. You deal with these seven keys to your life so you can get into the kingdom to come. Because if you ain't dealing with the seven keys to get into, uh, to, to, to get to the tree of life so that you can be found worthy to get into the kingdom, it don't even matter. You're right there with them anyway. So what I'm having, the ass whipping that I have waiting in store for them, it's going to come to you. What you going to do? And some of our brothers and sisters, they'll run around talking about, ah, that don't matter. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. Okay, man, woman, sister, brother, father, mother, all is good. Love Jesus. I got nothing to do with it. I'm not saying not to. I'm saying whatever you choose to do, do it and be okay with the consequences. Don't come crying the blues later because you chose wrong. This is all about choosing wisely. How do you choose wisely? By starting, understanding, and doing the repenting of your own soul, cleansing your own spirit, changing your whole paradigm. Two. We see the we see the uh, the stars. It brings me comfort. It brings me comfort to know that the X marks the spot here next year. It brings me comfort to know that uh, the uh, Air Kadashi is out here blowing down uh, uh, the the pig's uh, house. It, it brings me comfort to know that you know um, the the chariots are are showing up bringing me great joy, whereas to them, they are dismayed. They're struggling. They don't even want to talk about it. They're struggling so bad. And that, that's how you know that they, that, that they got problems when they don't even talk about it. It's right there. No, no, no. It's, 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 don't, don't you see it? No, I don't see it. I don't know what you're talking about. See, this, this, this is where they are. They don't even want to talk about it. They want to talk about a, 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 a water balloon, you know, a, a, a little balloon. Shoot, we spent we spent ten million dollars for two hours to blow down a Chinese made weather balloon. Really? Hmm. You took all. I mean, if it was, I mean, shoot, you could have just used you could have used a seven four, you know, Boeing seven forty seven or shoot, a little crop duster and just you know took a AK forty seven and shot it down. If that was the case. Why spend ten million? Because they wanted to make sure that they could destroy it, and they found out that they couldn't. So what they said? Oh, well, it's a weather balloon. It was a it's a, it's a it's a weather balloon, and we destroyed it, and we can't find it. We blew it all to pieces, and now we can't find near piece of it. Mm. Oh, imagine that! How nice! But somehow you want us to believe that you all are. are Going to heaven. See, that's the bamboozlement, and that's that's the that's the problem with Paul. 
because you cannot tell them they're wrong. Paul, in a hop, skip, in a jump, in a skinny minute, and say, but Paul said, but wait, I thought that this was about the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Yahweh Shai. Where the hell does Paul come into that? He was just an apostle. Matter of fact, he wasn't even a great apostle until the Gentiles made him great. Until the Gentiles made him great. So we have to be smart and and say, and look, I'm not mad at Paul. And Paul did what he was supposed to do. He actually he did his he did he did his mandated destiny. So I ain't mad at him. He had to lead people astray. Okay, he had he couldn't come and tell the Gentiles the truth. The Gentiles wouldn't have the truth. They wouldn't understand it. So he had to do it in a way that would get them to at least recognize their error, and they still didn't recognize their error. Now, why why am I saying that, Paul, the Gentiles, anything that the Gentiles use, anything that they say, this is the truth in the inner, you can already, you can already know that it's a lie. I mean, that's just, if we don't know that by now, you better go ask somebody. You don't know. I mean, my goodness, you can just see it. Matter of fact, it's so easily seen now that it's ridiculous. These people lie, lie, and lie. There is not, there is, (laughs) there is by no stretch of the imagination that these people ever told the truth, ever told the truth. And that's a mighty long time. That is a mighty long time. Since they've been in rulership, since they've created this last kingdom, since they revived their Roman Empire, they certainly have not told the truth. And that's why our redemption grows not. Because let's let me say let me do this. Let me let me let me say this. Let's take away all the scriptures, all the spirituality, all the anything, everything that is right. Let's just take it away for a second. And let's just look at the things as they are. If this is all there is, lies, deception, trickery, kill, red rum, murder, uh, you know, if, if, if this is it, then I don't want no parts of it. I might as well be elsewhere at this point. If this is it, if this is the, the pinnacle of societal success on a macro and micro level, then this is crap. This is literally crap. I'm tired of seeing a bumbling old dude sit here and bumble his way through. And, oh, he's old. I don't care. Go sit your ass down. Go sit down. You ain't even supposed to be up here talking no way. You're old. You're too old for this. All of them, go sit down. Every, listen, at some point, there has to be balance. If you take away all scriptures and all things that are true and right, and you just say to yourself, well, is there nothing that's going to change the minds and the actions of these people? I mean, my goodness. Now, if we bring the, 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 the truth and the righteousness back into it, then now we can say, well, there's going to be balance. There has to be balance. My goodness, there has to be balance. And if we don't see these things now, then you're, you if you don't see that, then you need already know you're on the wrong side. You're on the wrong side. If you don't see that this world is corrupted, it's corrupted absolutely, then you're on the wrong side. You are with the, the corruptible, the corrupted, absolutely. And if that if, if if that's your mission, so be it. Say la. Let it be. 
let it be. Because my mission has nothing to do with corrupting myself. Matter of fact, I feel like I feel like I have corrupted myself to not fully, but I have been corrupting myself in this world through my life that I feel now I'm tired of doing that and I need something else. I have to oh well you niggas always gotta find y'all you 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 uh uh this <laughs> This guy I knew said this to me when I first started this walk, and this this dude was from Louisiana, and he was a military man, and yada yada, and and he he really he and I really started getting into a lot of historical archaeology, anthropology. We read uh, Zachariah Sinchin and all that, and he was under the guise that there is no free will; it's just yada yada, you know, whatever. And, of course, he's a Gentile, okay? So one of the last conversations that we had, I was saying, I know now who I am. And it appears that I am I'm a descendant of the people of the book. And he said, nah, man, you, you, you know, you, 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 you black people always got to have a God. Y'all always got to have some sort of God over y'all. And I said, at first, you know, at that time, I took offense to it. Now, yeah, it makes sense. He was our, he is our God then and now. He never stopped being our God. The problem is, is that the Gentiles never had him. They wanted him. Excuse me. They wanted him, but they never had him. He gave them over to spirits to lead them astray from him. So where we had him and chose foolishly to say, to deny him, he left us for a short time. Whereas they, I mean, they never had him in the first place. So they conjured up, made up all these ideas about their society. So they showed us the picture of grandiose while they were slitting everyone's throats. They made us believe in them as some moral gods, but really were just a bunch of dogs. They had us believing that that who we were were less than while they ran around pandering to lies. When they truly are less... If we were less than, they were less than us. That's why they won't talk about the history. That's what this is all about, because as we come to remembrance of who we are, so as to be redeemed, they also are coming into remembrance of who they are and what they did, just like us. And, you know, am I mad at them? No, nah, I'm mad at them because they fulfilled their destiny. They got with the, they got their heaven on earth because they knew they would not have it in the here and now. Later. They knew that. They knew that they couldn't get to the kingdom. They knew that, so they wanted it here. Needed some uh, cold, godly water. But this is this is the thing. They are not redeemable unless they cleave to us to show themselves approved to be redeemed. And you know, brother Levi, he says, you know, there there are a lot of them out there showing themselves, you know, showing uh, showing themselves approved, right? but they're doing it in their pride. goes back to what I was saying. They can't get away from their vices. They can't get away from that tree of knowledge of good and evil. They can't get away from it. They love it. Matter of fact, it is what it is who they are. It is who they are. And they want to make everyone eat off of that tree. And for a long time we did. 
And now we're done. We're done eating off that tree. We're looking for the tree of life, and they're like, no, 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 you don't need to go. You don't need to eat off of that tree. You need to come back over here. Don't you want this? If you don't eat off of this tree, then you're not getting paid. If you don't do this, then we're not giving you this. This is what they're doing to us. And the father sees it, and the father at this stage has had enough. He's had enough. And this is what the father was telling me today. And this is this is this is what he's telling because I've been since last week. I, you know, I was listening. To, you know, this whole repenting thing. I mean, goodness gracious, why do we need to repent? Because we, our forefathers, said to put kill Yahweh and let his blood be on them and uh, and their children. And here we are. So we're redeemed. We are being redeemed and repented. We are repenting so that we can be redeemed for the kingdom to come. The father said, but wait, there's more. I said, yeah? He said, yes, there's more. I said, okay. He said, read this. First Peter 2. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone disallowed indeed uh, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a sp- are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Yahweh Shai. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believes, believeth on him shall not be confounded. Okay? Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which, he, which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, okay? And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar spirit, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Of all the things that I said, of the redeeming qualities, of the of the repentive nature, the repentive actions of how the Father wants us, that is why we are going to be redeemed. But ye, but ye are a chosen generation. I just, I, just, I, just, I just love it. That is, just makes my spirit just jump for, like my spirit right now. I can't even really finish it because I'm just, you know, so full of emotion. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Is that not us? Dearly beloved. I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. So I've been saying, having your conversations honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may be they may by your good works, they may by your good works, which they shall behold. Glorify God in the day of visitation. Is that not what's going on now? 
They're, we are the works. We show the works. The reason why they can't do nothing, because they're dumb, because they don't understand how to work for the Father, is because they put us down. But the Father has pulled us back up to show our works for him so that they can understand who we are to him. They don't even understand that. They're not they're too busy loving on Jesus, on, on, the, on, the, on the teddy bear Jesus, the good ship Jesus. They're not dealing with their inner man, their inner woman, their soul. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with, ev- that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. For so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Isn't that what we're doing? As free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness like the Gentiles, I've added that, but as the servants of God, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Now, this, this is where, you know, the Gentiles and their degenerateness, you know, this, this, this is where they went off. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward, the forward, forward, the you know the mean ones. But that doesn't mean that they're slaves. They're they're getting paid. Do the right things. You're a servant. If I might go to the if I go to the um, if I go to the restaurant, they're servers. Their master is their manager. But the foolish Gentiles took that out of context context as they did everything, and they misused it to demean us. For this is thankworthy. If a man for conscious toward, if a man for conscious toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully, for what glory is, is it? If when we if if when ye be buffeted for your fault patiently, but if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. Let me read that again. For this is thankworthy. So servants be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. For this is thankworthy. If a man for conscious toward if a man were conscious towards God, if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully, for what glory is it? If when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently. Question mark. When ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. The, and I, and I'm just going to go on record right here and say this because there's reading this now. And when I read it before, this was a, this was an issue with me. There's a this is a part in here that they done messed up, okay, in their transliteration. But anyway, we move forward. For even here unto where ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his footsteps. Now, who's us? And, 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 you know, us is the Israelites. He didn't do that. He didn't go through suffering by the hand of the Gentiles for the Gentiles. Again, that's foolish. That's, that's folly. Who did not sin, neither for, let me read 21 again. For even here unto where ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did not sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. 
who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should excuse me, should live unto righteously, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Okay, I want to do something real quick. I want to see what it says, how this I was looking at the Geneva Bible, so give me a second. I want to let me just see what these. I want to see how how they translated that piece. Just something I do. The white man's version. Oh, did I say that out loud? I didn't even. I say, man, they just out. That was it. I'm just saying. All right, listen. So I'm going to read. I'm going to read this First Peter two in the new, in the NIV version. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good, as you come to Him and as you come to Him, the living stone. Rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Yahawashai. For in scripture it says, see, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare that the praises of him who called you out of darkness into wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from the sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Living, live such good lives among the pagans that, you see what they said, Gentiles, among the pagans, that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or the governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Slaves, you see, it says, sir, slaves in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters not only to those who are good and considerate, but also those who are harsh. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. Okay, time out. Time out. So then, therefore, that would mean, it, by their their words here, that would mean that we who were victimized through slavery know God more than them. See, they, they can't get away from us. They can't run from us. You can't run, you can't hide. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. 
He himself bore our sins in the body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. But wait, wait a minute, let me just say, by his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Okay, a couple things. One, this is how you know that they have bastardized our scriptures, because all they do is talk about them. They use pronouns with no context. They, them, our, you, you know, well, well, who, who are you talking about? See, when I read this, I'm if I read it like this, I'm hearing them talk about themselves as Christians. But when I read it as in the KJV, I hear them talking. I hear the word talking to Israel. This is where it's all confounded and gone astray. And this is how you know that the Gentiles, don't have a clue. They just don't. Um, and then this part, he suffered, man. He bore, he, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. No time out. If this is the Christians, you're not living for righteousness. They do not do anything that they say. Nothing. Nothing. But that that that's you know, first Peter two. You know, we are we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. Not them. They got it for a time, but we get it eternity. That's why the whole issue of the thousand years and I listen, I, I had a conversation with folks all throughout this week, and I can understand it to some degree. It still don't fully resonate in my spirit as to where we are and how we are, but that's of no consequence. That's just me. But the reality is is that we are the chosen people. We are the royal priesthood. And the reason why we are is because we had to endure. That's an act. That's doing something. We had to endure we it was a, for you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd. Okay, but we had to endure. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. That's why we look for endurance and perseverance. They ain't looking for no endurance and perseverance. What, 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 what do they care about? They care about money. They care about material. They care about things. They care about their white Jesus. They care about their uh, their stocks and their bonds for their future. But when the father takes snatches their future away and they no longer have anything to say, Hmm. We'll see. While we're sitting over being quiet, repenting, enduring, and persevering, as he told Jacob, let me get to that. And Genesis twenty five twenty seven tells us Jacob had a quiet temperament. So so yes, he was quiet. I mean, the the whole deal is that it's our turn. It's our turn. Um, we no longer have to listen to what they're saying because what they're saying does not fit what they're doing. We no longer, we no longer are unable to call them out on it. We now have the confidence, the courage, and the strength by the fa- by the Father to call them out on it, and they can't do anything about it. This is not Jacob's trouble all over again like the camps wanted to say, oh, you know, the FEMA camps and blah, 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 blah and, and, you know, they're going to come martial law, blah, 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 blah. No, that has nothing to do with us. That has to do with the two-thirds, and the Gentiles. So if that's or 
are the one-third of our people and the one-third of their, their people. Let me see something. Let me see something. But these things come to the, the spirit pops these questions in my head and these uh, these things to do in my head as I talk. So it's interesting. So it's a total world population. That, the total world population is 7.8 billion, okay? Oh, what? Oh, oh wait. Yes, 7.8, so let's just say 7.89 billion, okay? Let's see some. 7.89 divided by two-thirds. Is that right? 7.9. Point nine minus two thirds. So three percent for that. The three percent off seven point eight nine. Let's see what is that. This is just something that. It's now in my head. So. And it just, it just bear with me a sec. So 19. No, that's not right. That's not right. There's my calculator. I just want to know how many people that really is is all I'm looking for to see how many people that really is. So bear with me one second. Later. Right, might be. But if we if we do two thirds as a decimal, that's point six seven, right? That makes sense, right? Six 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 point sixty six. So six seven is two thirds. So minus seven point eight nine is seven point two two. So that's two thirds of the world's population. Now I'm stuck on this. What is? Yeah. Okay, that makes more sense. So it's seven point. Now watch this. This is this is seven point eight nine billion people on the face of the earth. Two thirds of that 7.89 is 5.2 billion. There you go. So so 7.89 minus 5.7.89 minus 5.2 equals. So there'll be This is just rudimentary numbers based on Gentile numbers and what they provided me with. It's saying 2.69 billion will be left. (laughs) That's still a lot. That's not to say to get get off path, but that's just to say that, you know, if we're just looking at numbers and total population, how do we do this? You know, still a lot, although it's not a lot, but you still got to consider there's only 360 million people in America. So, you know, I would venture to say the large part, a a large part of America is going to be gone. Large part of Europe is going to be gone. But I ain't going to get into that. 
that's just me getting me just thinking and Spirit said, look at this. So 2.69 billion people. Continue to do the work, people. Continue to do the work. That is to show you, show thyself approved because it is on and popping right now. Our new year is coming up next month. Pluto goes into Aquarius. From that point forward, we'll have another year. So X marks the spot, and once X marks the spot, I do feel it's a wrap. But nevertheless, nevertheless, continue to repent. Continue to be redeemed, to seek redemption. Don't be like the Gentiles, thinking you don't need to do anything. Our redemption is nigh. Our redemption is nigh. All praises to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. To Yahweh Shai, acknowledgement. The Holy Spirit, acknowledgement. And to the family, we are being redeemed. Stay the course. To the nation, know thy father is here. Know thy father is here. To the Gentiles that are listening in, cleave like your life depending on it. To the uh, don't really give a flip florin, unlucky. So I'm going to say unlucky to you. And to all the friends and family, shalom.